Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Castello, Board Certified Family Practice, and today I want to talk to you about MRSA bacteria, or MRSA, methicillin resistant Staph aureus bacteria. So MRSA bacteria is a Staph aureus skin bacteria that has become multi-drug resistant. So methicillin or penicillin drugs generally treat staph infections, but the MRSA bacteria has found a way to become immune to or resistant to the penicillin and cephalosporin families and in fact several other antibiotics, so it becomes a multi-drug resistant bacteria. The problem is, is that, that this skin bacteria causes abscesses and boils and skin infections and can be a quite nasty bacteria if you have it on your skin. So just a little basics, everybody's body skin is covered head to toe with bacteria all the time. So think of your body as a housing complex and the rule is, is that it has to be fully occupied almost 100% of the time and the occupants are bacteria and yeast. Hopefully in your housing complex you have good tenants or healthy bacteria, just regular old Staph aureus bacteria that doesn't cause any harm and it's supposed to be there and it's actually protective from other infections. When you take antibiotics or you have exposure, your skin can be colonized with this MRSA drug resistant bacteria and what happens is, is that all of the good tenants, the regular Staph aureus bacteria move out when the bad tenants or the MRSA bacteria move move in. And before you know it, your housing complex is completely overrun with bad players and you're colonized with MRSA bacteria. When you take an antibiotic, it generally kills the good bacteria most easily and first, and that leaves the drug-resistant bacteria without competition for space, and that's why they tend to move in. Think about taking an antibiotic as being a police force and you ask the police force to go in and empty out all of the residents of the housing complex. And they do a pretty good job. There's always a couple of stragglers that they don't see. Uh, once the police leave, the rule is you have to be 100% occupied so tenants move back in. And the question becomes whether healthy tenants or regular staph aureus bacteria moves back in or the MRSA bacteria moves back in. And generally speaking, once you're colonized with the bad bacteria, that's who tends to move back into the housing complex. The problem is, is that when these bad bacteria live on your skin instead of the healthy bacteria, you're more prone to skin infections and boils and abscesses, and that becomes a recurrent problem, and even worse, the regular antibiotics we would give you to treat it are oftentimes ineffective, so unless the doctor is thinking about MRSA bacteria, they're probably going to put you on the wrong antibiotics, so hopefully they cover you or treat you for MRSA bacteria, or they at least do a culture, and when they find out it's MRSA, they're able to change the antibiotics. Things that you can do to try and get rid of the MRSA bacteria, it's very difficult, is you can take bleach baths, so a cup of bleach or half a cup of bleach and a half a tub of water, and it's about the same concentration as a public swimming pool, and you take bleach baths three or four times a week. That knocks down the amount of bacteria on your skin, but unfortunately, as soon as you get out of the tub, the 100% rule applies, and you become recolonized typically with the same bacteria that you had on your skin before you uh, got in the bleach bath. Another thing that you can try and do is to take a 10-day or 14-day course of antibiotics, both by mouth, as well as putting antibiotic ointment in your nose to kill the bacteria in your nose to try and eradicate as much of the MRSA bacteria as you can. The catch becomes, once you start to recolonize, you want to recolonize with healthy bacteria or put good tenants back into your housing complex. And you can do that by actually contacting other people that have good bacteria or that don't have the MRSA. Unfortunately, your household members are probably also colonized with the MRSA bacteria. So take your bleach bath, take your antibiotic, go to work, start shaking hands and hugging people, and try to pick up somebody else's healthy bacteria. They did an experiment where they tried to take regular Staph aureus bacteria so you could buy from a laboratory Staph aureus bacteria in a little vial, treat somebody with an antibiotic. When they were finishing up their antibiotic, you would take this bacteria, put it on a Q-tip, and actually swab it in the person's nose and try and introduce the normal, healthy Staph aureus bacteria and then let you recolonize with the good bacteria. Uh, what happened was there was a couple of immunocompromised uh, children in this trial, and they got Staph aureus sepsis and bacteria, and they actually died from regular Staph infection. So the FDA right now doesn't let us do that as a treatment, but you can access healthy Staph bacteria from a family member, a friend who does not have MRSA bacteria. So you need a volunteer. You need to ask them to go to their doctor, have their nose swabbed, and check for the MRSA bacteria. And if they don't carry the bacteria, either give them a big, friendly hug and a handshake after you take your antibiotic, 
cosmetics. You can borrow their clothes, kind of gross, but uh, put their clothes on right after they take them off and try and pick up their skin bacteria. If you get recurrent infections or you get recurrent boils, you need to make sure you're going to your doctor. You need to make sure that they're checking for that MRSA bacteria. Uh, MRSA can get into your bloodstream. It can be life-threatening, can cause pneumonias and other infections as well. So if you do know that you are colonized with the MRSA bacteria and you get sick with the flu or sick with a lung infection or something like that, you need to let the doctor know that you've had MRSA infections before and they may want to change your antibiotics. Uh, you can go ahead and read my link below for more of a description. Thanks for listening. Dr. Greg Castello, thanks.